Welcome back Welcome to episode, back to episode five. five. I wanted to start this one off by addressing that little black collar in front of the coupler there on the y-axis uh, stepper motor and ball screw junction. Um, what I'm doing is just tightening those down, making sure they're snug because the x-axis one had come loose and it caused some problems. So I just kind of snugged them up as best I could and uh, I'm measuring the backlash here with my uh, five tenths indicator here and I'm using the jog pendant which um, is about half a tenth resolution so it takes about ten clicks to move it half a tenth and as you can see the backlash there is less than that because the needle is completely responsive back and forth and then I did the same thing with the x-axis here just zero in the indicator. I have the uh, magnetic base attached to the base of the mill and the needle on the table. So here we see the same issue. It still takes about 10 clicks to move it half a tenth or half a thousand, I'm sorry. And the needle is responsive with a single click so the backlash is less than half a tenth and again I'm using the jog pendant So did the same thing for the Z, even though I didn't adjust that um, collar, just because I I can't really get to it right now without pulling off all my waterproofing caulk around the base of the way covers. But I never really noticed that much backlash, if any, in the Z. In fact, I've never noticed backlash in the Z, and it's probably partially due to all that weight of the motor, you know, kind of preloading the ball screw. So same thing here, the needle is responsive to half a tenth clicks. A little bit closer look there. So you can see the needle jumping back and forth between one click. Again, this is with the jog pendant set to X1. I also set it to X10 just to see uh, kind of what that looked like. And it was kind of all over the place. There we go, sort of no rhyme or reason to it. Back to X1, everything looks great. So I was still measuring backlash when I would indicate off of a part with the Heimer 3D taster. As you can see here, I have the, the dial test indicator touching off against the side of the tool and the 3D taster is zeroed out on a part down there. And you can see that this is x-axis indication here. And as you can see, the and I'm using Mach 3 here, and I'm just jogging by tenths. 
um, the uh, dial test indicator needle is responsive and the Heimer kind of lags by maybe half a thousandth or something. I'm trying it out here on the uh, Y axis now and you'll see the same thing. Even though I have the acceleration set pretty generously on this mill, you can see by how violently the needle kind of jumps on the uh, dial test indicator, how rapidly it's accelerating one-tenth. Much more so than using the uh, jog pendant. And again, it lags behind by maybe half a thousand. the 3D taster. So I need to find out if I need to get that serviced or what. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have that much backlash. And I did the same thing on the Z. Now curiously it doesn't have it doesn't seem to have any backlash in the Z. Both uh, needles are uh, completely responsive with one another as I jog the Z up and down by tenths. So it seems that X and Y have backlash in my 3D taster. So I emailed the uh, Heimer USA and see what they have to say about it. Okay, moving right along, we're, we're machining the uh, recoil grooves in the Picatinny rail on the top portion of the gas block. And this is a full slot with a 3 inch end mill. <laughs> it sounds really good. Um, you'll notice that the uh, fixture is now oriented vertically. Again, I was apprehensive about doing it this way because in order to reach the features of the part with uh, with short tools like this one, I couldn't have that much overhang on either side of the fixture plate. So the vise is, not, is only holding about a quarter inch of the fixture plate or so, maybe a little bit more. I didn't want to take any aggressive cuts while it was in this position. And this seemed to handle it okay. It's just the uh, 3 16 and end mills not putting that much uh, force on it. So in order to make sure that rail is dimensionally accurate, um, I do the full slot and then I come back and I finish the sides. just to ensure that uh, there's no error induced by doing a full slot. And then I go in and put in uh, lightning recesses on the land of the rail.
So Carl at Lakeshore Carbide came back with another suggestion uh, to try to eliminate another Z-Pass. And to, to do that, I'd have to take a depth of cut of 0.8 inches. So all the other parameters are the same, but the depth of cut is greater. And uh, that seemed to handle it fine. I'm just running a lateral pass. Uh, when I actually get to uh, machining a gas block with that parameter, I might have to slow the spindle speed down, as he suggested, to kind of eliminate that chatter. Although I didn't really hear it on that straight pass. So there's the finished rail portion, and now that concludes that that top portion of the gas block. So now I flip the uh, fixture plate in the other orientations, so now we can access the bottom side. Now this is kind of an aggressive cut, which I was uh, fearful of, just because that uh, fixture plate is not held super solidly. But it seems to work out just fine. This is a full slot with a 3 8 inch rougher. A uh, pretty deep depth of cut there. And wow, that sounded great. So then I go back and take uh, some lighter passes at a faster feed rate. And I'm using uh, the G-Wizard calculator to come up with these numbers. And some of these numbers I'm using, since uh, I'm not taking any kind of complicated cut, I'm using the high-speed machining feature of that calculator to go ahead and bump everything up to max. Since I'm not, uh, you know, it's just a straight pass across. It's not uh, engaging more material, you know, than you can calculate for. So then I, this is the only portion of that cut that I wanted to have a, a nice finish, so I go back and just finish the surface of it there. So now we switch to back to the 3 16 inch end mill, the same one we used on the rail, and we're doing a full slotting operation here too which I'm always apprehensive about doing a full slot but man they, they almost seem, seem to sound better when you're doing a full slot but it, at least it sounds better there now it comes around to the side and it takes uh, a bit deeper cut and it starts to chatter a little bit so I might change the uh, parameters for that maybe slow down the RPM a little bit. And then I go back in with a finish pass. And I'm, this whole bottom side I'm trying to remove as little material as I can get away with because I would much rather machine a lot of these features from the side. But some of these I think would just be quicker and easier to get from this vantage point. starting to lose coolant pressure, I had to refill the reservoir again. Now I'm using a 47 thousandths radius three flute cutter here just to round over that edge. And I left about one thousandths on the top and one thousandths on the side just to make sure that the sharp edge of that cutter wouldn't uh, leave a ledge and it didn't so that worked out really nice in fact I might actually drop it down to maybe half a thousandths or, or even if that because it doesn't leave a, a ledge now it does leave a ledge on the on the left side there the front of the gas block just because I left some extra material there so when I come in and machine it from the side it will uh, it'll leave a consistent finish across All right, I feel like we're starting to cook with gas here. Uh, I'm going to leave with a few photos of it before I take it off the fixture plate, and then a few other photos when I bring it back into my office. Um, it's looking great so far. I was 
really uh, sort of enigmatic the way I was going to cut that bottom. But uh, it worked out okay, and I'm pretty happy with it. The round over did leave a little bit of a lip on the sides, just barely enough to feel. So I think I'm going to you know, widen that tool path a little bit. The front and the back lip I'm, I left there purposefully. Um, but everything else looks great. There's a few more things I wanted to machine from this vantage point, but I don't have the tools for it yet, like the uh, socket for the quick detach sling swivel and the uh, hole that routes the uh, hot gas from the barrel to the gas tube needs to be drilled. And I need to get a, f a few more uh, tool holders from my uh, glacer machine to do that. Here's a few more pictures of the rail and the uh, lightning recesses on the side, which I think is a really nice touch. But yeah, so far it's working out great. So uh, thanks for watching and join me in the next video. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget to uh, visit my blog page. I usually do a write-up on each one of these videos that has uh, more pictures and more details about uh, you know my thought processes. So. Uh, you can you can see that at warmachinellc.com forward slash blog.